Hi, my name is Maria Culgan. I'm a product manager for the Oracle database. And in this video, I'm going to share some SQL tuning tips. Imagine we've got a new query that isn't using the index everybody was expecting it to, and you've been asked to find out why. Where do you start? First thing you're going to want to do is check out the SQL statement in question. And when we do that, we find it's a simple SQL statement accessing just one table, my sales, with two where clause predicates, one on the product ID and one on the customer ID. Let's take a look at the execution plan. The plan we're getting by default is an index range scan followed by a table access by row ID. And the cost of that plan is about 2,500. The execution plan everybody was expecting is an index range scan without any access to the table, but that plan by default has a cost of nearly 10,000. So we're gonna need more information from the database to work out why the cost of the plan everybody wants is so expensive. So what do we know about the my sales table? Simple select count star reveals that there's 2 million rows in my sales. We also notice there are two indexes on it. The first index contains all of the columns that we need for the query. And that's the index everybody was expecting called prod customer com index. The second index is called prod cost and is only on the two where clause predicates, product ID and customer ID. Let's take a look now at the sales table structure. After all, it's got 2 million rows. You would expect it perhaps to be partitioned. But when we look at the data dictionary, we find that it's not. A quick check of the statistics for my sales indicates that there are no stale statistics, so we should be good there. Let's now check the index stats. Both indexes also have stale stats marked as no, so we should have reasonable statistics. Let's take a look at what they actually are. We'll notice there's a high number of both leaf blocks and B levels for the index that we were expecting us to use. And so perhaps that's a clue about why the optimizer didn't pick it. But we're going to need more information. So let's use a hint to force the plan that we actually want. We're not so much interested in the plan itself as it's rather straightforward an index range scan. What we're more interested in is the predicate information underneath the plan. This shows how the where clause predicates are going to be used by the optimizer in that execution plan. You'll notice there that we have both an access predicate and a filter predicate listed. And the customer ID is listed as both access and filter predicate. This actually means that it's being used as a filter predicate and only the prod ID is being used as an access predicate. So is that a good or a bad thing? In order to understand this more, we need to know exactly what it means to be an access versus a filter predicate. An access predicate is a where clause predicate that's used for data retrieval or to access the data that we need to answer this particular query. So for example, it could be the start or stop key for an index, or it could be a set of row IDs that are being passed to a full table scan. On the other hand, a filter predicate is a where clause predicate used to filter out unnecessary data after it's been retrieved. So in this example here, we'll actually do a full table scan on my users before applying the where clause predicate on username. Applying the predicate after the data access does require additional CPU to do that filtering and therefore it can increase the cost of an index access. Let's compare how the predicate information differs between the two plans. On the default plan, you'll notice both the product ID and the customer ID are being used as access predicates. However, in the plan that we were hoping to have, we noticed that only the prod ID is being used as an access predicate and the customer ID is being used as a filter predicate. How where clause predicates are used impacts the cost of that index access along with the index statistics. Let's look at the cost calculation that's used for both of these index range scans so that we can see exactly how this works in practice. The cost for the index range scan on the prod customer index, the one where we're using both where clause predicates as access predicates is calculated using this formula. We don't expect you to remember these formulas, but I'm showing it to you so that I can prove where the cost of nine comes from for this index range scan. The formula used to calculate the cost for the index range scan on the prod customer com index is quite different. Remember this time only one where clause predicate is used as an access predicate. The other is used as a filter predicate. Again, when I supply the statistics to that formula, you'll notice we get a much higher cost of over 9,000. So we know that the predicate information is being treated differently across the two indexes, 
But why is that? We need to go back and look at how the indexes have been defined in order to understand why the predicate information is being treated differently. If we look at the prod cost com index, we'll notice that although it contains all three columns needed for the query, the two columns that have where clause predicates, prod ID and customer ID are not the leading edge of the index, only the product ID is. They're separated by the column we need for the select clause. Whereas on the second index, the index that is being chosen, both the product ID and customer ID are the leading edge of the index, which is why they can both be used as access predicates on that index. Before I give you the solution to this problem, let's take a look at some of the common myths surrounding the selection of indexes by the optimizer. The most common misconception is the optimizer will pick the index that contains all the necessary columns to answer a query, when in fact the optimizer picks the index based on the cost of accessing those indexes. How where clause predicates are used and the order of the columns in the index has a massive impact on the optimizer's choice, much more so than whether all of the columns are actually present in the index. So how do we solve our index problem? The solution is actually quite straightforward. We simply need to create an additional index on my sales that contains the product ID and customer ID first as the leading edge, and then has the columns we need from the select list, in this case, the comment column. By creating such an index, the optimizer will automatically pick an index range scan only plan for us, and that plan has a much lower cost. Thanks for joining me today. You can get more information about SQL tuning and the optimizer on this YouTube channel, or by checking out the optimizer blog at blogs.oracle.com, my blog at sqlmaria.com, or try your hand at actually doing some SQL tuning using our live labs, or by looking at the Oracle documentation. Thanks for joining me today.